Recently, I ended up arguing on Twitter with people who still believe in Gamergate in 2022, and that's just a sordid situation to be in. Why still be a useful idiot long after it's useful? As a social phenomenon in the recent past, Gamergate is worth analysing how easily the misogyny of young men online could be weaponized. It's something to read up on occasionally. This kind of mass hysteria is gonna recur online, and we'll handle it better if we understand it more. When Gamergate was a contemporary thing in 2014, though, I constantly kept up to date with the news, whether I wanted to or not. I worked in video game retail, and had wasted a lot of my life on the medium. One of the people harassed by the movement was Brianna Wu, who was targeted because she made a good joke? I've not kept up with Brianna, but one thing I know about her from Gamergate is the claim that she was caught faking her own harassment, and I think I figure I even believed that a bit, that she exacerbated things and wasn't fully to be trusted. I really never thought about it much on a conscious level, but I guess the gossip got me. In this recent Twitter conversation, and I use the term wrongly, one of the Gamergate NPCs brought up the auto-harassment thing, and I recognised the screenshot in question, but I'd never really read or investigated it in the past. I just knew it would come up a lot as their evidence against her. This time, though, I did something few Gamergaters could ever manage. I looked at it, I read it. The claim is that she posted harassment to herself without realising she was using her own named account, and that description apparently goes with this image. But then it says, knock yourselves out, and the post itself isn't harassment, but a question. I can't fully grasp the intent of the post, as the context of the moment is now ancient by online standards. But this is some willingly provoking her harassers using her own name. That's really easy to interpret if you just consider women to have intellectual agency, but I guess that's where gamergators fail. Here's a know your meme commenter figuring it out years ago. Know your meme commenters are not known for their acuity. That's why this screenshot, this link, is not Wu harassing herself. But it doesn't really matter to people who want to believe it. Reactionary movements are set up on belief perseverance, clinging to what they already apparently know, accepting no new news. No matter how easily you dismantle their evidence, they'll still return to it. It's the their rhetorical comfort blanket in tatters. That's true of the claim that Zoe Quinn slept around for review scores, of a campaign to call gamers dead, of anything Gamergate can bring up. In some cases, we even have evidence of the threads on 4chan that planted these ideas. That's all it is. She didn't fake her own harassment. She made a post as herself and then deleted it when soggy brains spun up a lie about it. Ask a Gamergator for any other evidence on this claim, and it'll all be their tactical ops around how they've chosen to misrepresent a woman speaking for herself. Perhaps initially as conscious bad will, but ultimately as their casual misogyny and faith in their movement's constructs. I don't want to dwell on eight-year-old manufactured drama, but to point out how these beliefs persist way beyond their credibility, and how the determination and spread width of the belief can cause it to seem more credible, despite the evidence clearly not even showing what they claim. It's like religion, full of evangelists and apologists, but based on blind faith and constructed beliefs we can trace the origins of. Once the herd mentality has settled on its message, nothing else matters. We are all prone to believe perseverance, and I hope that at least by knowing that, we can remind ourselves to see past it sometimes. Unless we really, really don't want to, eh?